Avengers Endgame has finally dropped in theaters and an era of the MCU has come to a close. That means it's time to stop and rank all 36 MCU heroes from the worst to the best. Hi, my name is Sean Chandler and I love to talk about movies way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your picks for the best and the worst movie heroes inside of the MCU. As we go into this, I'm not ranking them based off of power, but based off their characterization, their level of intrigue, their character arc inside of these films. My list isn't the right list, it's just my list and I would love to see yours. Before we get started, people frequently ask me about where I get my posters, my Funkos, and what gear I use. There's a link down below in the description that answers those questions. With that said, let's get started. In last place is Mantis. Now, she's had some cute moments with Drax and had a couple of funny lines here and there, but basically her character arc is going from being complicit in the murder of thousands of Star-Lord siblings, which she mildly feels guilty about, to kind of being a hero with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Thus far, we haven't really seen her do anything heroic or had a compelling arc from her, so she comes in last for me. Coming in at number 35, is Quicksilver. Kind of breaks my heart to put him this low on the list because I think Aaron Taylor Johnson did a perfectly fine job with the role. He had some nice banter with Quicksilver, but they killed him off with the speed of Quicksilver himself. Within 20 minutes of him becoming a hero, he's killed off. And if they don't care enough to keep him alive, I don't care enough to put him higher up on my list. Next up is Baby and Teenage Groot. As warm and charming as the original Groot was, our new Groot is significantly less appealing. Of course, dancing Baby Groot in the credits of the original Guardians was adorable. But then he had kind of a mean streak inside of Guardians Volume 2, and then Teenage Groot was written to be an angsty teenager and kind of very unlikable. So save for his Stormbreaker moment and his I am Groot, I am Steve Rogers moment in Infinity War, I haven't really liked new Groot all that much. Number 33 is Wong. Now, I don't think they've done anything particularly Wong with the character. He's got some nice rapport with Doctor Strange, and Benedict Wong plays him rather well, but they also haven't given him a character arc as of yet. I was hoping that he was going to have more to do in Endgame because they gave him a character poster. That didn't really happen, so even though I like the character, I can't put him particularly high on this list. At number 32 is Korg. Like the character of Wong, Korg's name ends with a G, and I have a lot of fun with this character. He works better as a comic relief addition rather than as an actual hero or revenger. It is kind of fun to see him playing Fortnite and poning noobs, but once again, there's not really a character arc here. He's just a nice spice sprinkled over a couple of movies. Then we've got Captain Marvel. At this point, she's easily my least favorite of the title characters. So in her film, she was written as someone with amnesia who's been told by the people around her to restrain her emotions, so naturally we didn't get to know her character all that well, what her personality is like besides feisty and cocky. And given the nature of her movie, I thought that was a decent change of pace, but I was really hoping as we went into Endgame that they were going to develop her character beyond that. Nope, in Endgame she's feisty and cocky, kind of condescending, and lacking in compassion, it makes her character very unlikable. I really did not like how they wrote her character or that new haircut that they gave her. And Endgame might have knocked her back 10 slots on this list. We've made it to the top 30 with Falcon. This is another side character that I enjoy. I have no particular problems with Falcon, but they've never really given him his own story arc to fully develop the character besides this role as the sidekick to Captain America. Where Endgame ends and with the transition that kind of takes place there and the fact that he's getting his own TV show, hopefully we'll finally get to see more of who he is and he can move up this list whenever I update it. Coming in at number 29 is Shuri. This is a quirky, fun addition to the franchise. She gets in on the action from time to time and perhaps how skilled she is is part of the problem to why she's kind of lower on this list. They've written her to be a little bit too smart for how old she is and too competent given that she's still a teenager and at a certain point in time, when you make her that much smarter to the people that have already been established as brilliant and who have 30 year long careers in being brilliant, a little bit too intelligent for who the character is at this phase in their life. And that 
kind of pulls me out of things a little bit. Number 28, M'Baku. This is a character that hasn't necessarily had a ton of screen time, but they've done a lot with the screen time that they have given him. As the leader of the Jabari tribe who's distant, they've given him and his people a nice arc throughout Black Panther, leading into Infinity War that pays off the relationship that was formed within Black Panther. He's also given some nice little one-liners in the mix, so he's someone that I always enjoy when they put him on screen. Next up is War Machine. This might be the most underutilized character in the entire MCU. Rhodey has been around as long as Tony Stark, but they constantly put him on the back burner and make him this minor character in these big stories. Finally, in Endgame, they kind of promoted him a little bit, gave him his own plot line, some great one-liners, then gave him some moments in the spotlight. Hopefully, moving forward, he can stand on his own and not just... Tony's friend. Number 26 is Wasp. Now I do enjoy this character, but she's limited by the fact that she's written to be the opposite of Scott Lang. Scott Lang is unorthodox, untrained, kind of goofy, this normal guy swept up into this world of superheroes. Who is she? She's kind of stiff, organized, raised by a pair of superheroes and trained from a young age. So there's no compelling journey for her to become Wasp. She just needs permission from her dad which is kind of a problem in and of itself. Still, as soon as she puts the costume on, she does pack a mean sting, and she is a nice foil to Scott Lang's antics. Coming in at number 25 is Okoye. This is a character that I think has been used very well with the limited time that she's had inside of the MCU. Her character inside of the movie Black Panther was used to kind of demonstrate the conflicting values and loyalties inside of Wakanda when Killmonger showed up. Add to the mix, she's had some nice one-liners and action inside of it, and while she's only a side character, I think she's made a little bit of a mark. From there, we'll go with Nebula. I think she's one of the characters most improved by Endgame. Prior to that film, she'd almost entirely been defined by her relationship to other people, and because of that, I kind of found her obnoxious and bland inside of the Guardians movies, but Endgame finally gave her her own story where she interacted with different people, not just her family members, and gave her some very much needed upgrades. Number 23 is Valkyrie. This is one of our newer heroines who's actually had quite a massive character arc throughout these films. She starts up as the washed up warrior, turns into a revenger, and by the end of Endgame has become the new leader of Asgard. She has been used very efficiently in these films. Number 22 is Vision. Now this is an inherently interesting character given his origins, his ties to Jarvis and Ultron, and just the personality and power powers that he has, he is interesting, but we've never gotten to see him fully in action. It seemed like as soon as he's created, he's used as a side character, and then he's killed off inside of Infinity War. So unfortunately, as cool of a character as this is, and as much as he's had some great moments, they killed him off too soon. Then we've got Pepper Potts. Now this is a character I wasn't initially planning on including in this list, but the Russos included her in the finale of Endgame, so I would be bonkers to not include her in my list. And she was given powers and made a hero all the way back in Iron Man 3. So she's someone that you don't immediately think of as an overt hero, but she has been the hero and she's also been the hero to Tony Stark that has anchored his char character and given him some humanity, so of course she belongs on this list and she's been used properly in this universe. Our top 20 is going to start off with Bucky. He's been a war hero. He's been a villain. He's been an anti-hero. Now he's come full circle and he is a hero once again. In a lot of ways, he's one of the more interesting characters inside of the MCU, but I think he's held back a little bit by the fact that we've always seen him through the eyes of Captain America. I'm excited that I think he's going to show up in one of the Disney Plus TV shows, so we'll finally get to see him stand on his own and carry his own story rather than see his story through someone else's eyes. Coming in at number 19 is Scarlet Witch. This is another character with a ton of potential that I don't think has been fully realized as of yet. For the most part, they use her character to establish the inciting incident of stories, but then other people take the lead with that story. Civil War and Ultron being prime examples of this taking place. Then again, she always gets a great throwdown moment, especially in Endgame, where she just steals the spotlight and tears things up. So I'm pretty excited to see what's going to happen with her Disney Plus TV show. Number 18 is Drax. In a lot of ways, he's one of my personal favorites. The reveal of his character and humor in Guardians of the Galaxy is one of the most pleasant surprises I have ever had in the theater because they didn't show his humor in the trailers for it. You discovered it as you watched the movies. 
But I don't think that they've properly utilized his character or developed him since then. He's still just the guy with the goofy jokes that wants to kill Thanos. We just had a movie where Thanos was killed twice and Drax wasn't really involved in the killing of Thanos either time. So he's someone that has actually dropped back on my list a lot over the last year. At number 17 is Loki. He's one of the great anti-heroes of the MCU. He's probably spent more time as a villain in the MCU than as a hero, but in several of the stories, he showed up on the right side at just the right moment to help Thor save the day. He's probably a higher character on the list for me overall in the MCU, but as a hero, he's not really a major player. Next up is Star-Lord. This is a very frustrating placement for me. Like Drax, I loved Star-Lord in the original Guardians of the Galaxy, everything they did and established with his character. And then they have developed his character in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and Infinity War, but I wasn't really crazy about what they did. In Guardians Volume 2, they make him this big, powerful, cosmic person and then take that away right afterwards. And then in Infinity War, he had some really funny one-liners, but his character is written to be so insecure and unhinged that he becomes unlikable. So as much as I want to have Star-Lord much higher on my list, I think they've made some pretty big missteps with this character. Number 15, Groot. The original Groot might be the biggest risk that the MCU has ever taken. On paper, it should not work to have a character that is a talking tree that only says, I am Groot. But James Gunn manages to craft this incredibly likable and quirky character that you instantly fall in love with. So when he makes his final sacrifice, you actually become incredibly emotional with this very sappy moment when a tree says, we are Groot. Then we've got Nick Fury. He's kind of like the backbone of the MCU as this character that's been here since the original Iron Man in that post credit scene, pulling our Avengers together. He's the mysterious leader that shows up from time to time. And finally, just this year, got put in the spotlight in the lead in uh, Captain Marvel. But a less cynical Nick Fury who's discovering this world while being just as charismatic as ever. While he might not be someone that's always there up front, he's always a nice addition. Coming in at number 13 is Rocket Raccoon. Now this is a character that is very much love-hate for me, as his character can be so insufferably self-destructive that he drives you insane, but for that same reason, as he has redemptive arcs, as he does good things and becomes a hero, it's that much more satisfying. So as you go into Endgame, he might not have the biggest arc of any of the characters in the film, but you're seeing a transformed Rocket who has lost everything and is joining this side to try and make everything right. Number 12 is Hawkeye. This is the character most improved by Endgame. They finally gave him his own subplot and character arc. He's been an okay addition to the franchise up to this point in time, but he's constantly been sidelined inside of these movies. The most interesting thing about him is that he owns a house and has a family and is a totally normal guy when he's not being a superhero. But Endgame allowed him to be the personification of the pain and the tragedy and the rage that people felt after losing their family, where Captain America and some of the other people felt it as a failure that they couldn't save the world. Hawkeye is the person that visibly lost his wife and his children right in front of him and made what Thanos did personal. Add to that, he got a nice redemptive arc and he's our most improved player. Next, Gamora. If Hawkeye was the most improved character from Endgame, Gamora was the most improved character from Infinity War. Prior to that film, I found her pretty dull as she was only used essentially as a foil to Star-Lord's antics and as someone to drop exposition about Thanos and his plan and her family. But inside of Infinity War, they finally explored what makes her tick, her relationship to Thanos in it all got a lot more interesting and made her someone that you actually cared about. Before we go into our top 10, remember to share your picks for the best and the worst down below in the comment section. There's no right list. Let's just have a nice, lively, fun discussion about these characters from these movies that we love. Kicking off our top 10 is Yondu. He was a scene stealer in the first Guardians of the Galaxy, but Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 made him one of the most complex characters inside of the Guardians franchise overall. Whether you're talking Talking about the connections to Quill's dark past or his relationship to Space Stallone, they made him into a bit of a tragic character with a redemptive arc. So much so that Groot via Rocket invites him into the Guardians of the freaking Galaxy. 
Except he didn't say frickin'. Add to that, he also does a killer Mary Poppins impression. Number nine is Ant-Man, one of the most lighthearted and innocent characters on this entire list. He's not trying to be the big hero, he's just trying to do the right thing. And because of that, he adds a sense of fun and levity to any scenes that he's added to. Also because he's kind of dopey inside of all of this, he has great reactions to other people saying things and other people have great reactions to everything that he says. He might not be one of the most exciting and flashy characters on this list, but he is quite pleasant. I had to do at least one of the ant puns. Coming in at number eight is Thor. This is a tough one for me because he's obviously one of our main Avengers, but I find him to be the most inconsistently written character in the entire MCU. Just now that you've seen Endgame, think about his character in that film and go and watch 15 minutes of the original Thor. They're two totally different characters and not in an organic development of the character kind of way. He's written totally differently. Depression does not turn you into a Saturday Night Live parody of yourself. His character is just written inconsistently. Still, he's been heroic, he's been hilarious, he's been heartbreaking, and through Ragnarok in Infinity War, they gave him a thoroughly moving character arc. I just wish they had written him more consistently throughout the years. At number seven is Black Panther. Now, this is one of the most interesting character on the list in that he is a superhero with superpowers and a cool suit that can do fancy things. He's also a king responsible for a kingdom, and this gives his character all these interesting dynamics and nuances to the way that he interacts with the rest of the MCU, as well as the types of stories you can tell with him. The thing that holds him back from being higher up on the list is he's kind of a dull character when it comes to his personality, whereas everyone else kind of has a little bit of a zing and pop to them as a person. He's pretty straight laced as the king. Then we've got Doctor Strange. I have loved all the little bits of Doctor Strange that we've gotten since his movie came out. Now, I liked his movie and his character in that film, but I've fallen in love with the character ever since he started to show up in Thor Ragnarok and then Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. And I think the reason for that is that in Doctor Strange, he's still becoming this master of the mystical arts and he doesn't become the full Doctor Strange until the third act of the film. And so as he's shown up more and more in these additional films, you're seeing the fully formed, fully competent, fully confident Doctor Strange with his full craft at his hand, and I have loved those additions. Bringing us into the top five is Black Widow. Now, this is a character that they have very slowly developed. When she first debuted in Iron Man 2, she was just a pretty face that could beat people up in cool ways. Then with each film, they've added another layer and another layer, and we've slowly started to understand what makes her tick and how she connects with all these other characters and become this very intriguing, mysterious person and finally, in Endgame, they actually gave her an emotional arc with her character where she could emote a lot more, and it's made me very excited to see her movie come out next year. Coming in at number four is Hulk. This is a character who's gone through some massive transformations throughout these films. Whether you're talking about an actual swapping out of the actor playing Bruce Banner, or just the metamorphosis that the Hulk has actually taken from the original Incredible Hulk all the way to Professor Hulk inside of Endgame. I've kind of enjoyed all the different phases of the Hulk. I've always been kind of a defender of the Incredible Hulk. I think there's a lot of great things inside of that movie, some standout Hulk moments, and then they keep using the character differently, but they feel like extensions in growth of the character, and they're all a step in the same direction. Where it feels like Thor, they kind of go up and down as to whether he's serious or a goofy character. They've consistently morphed Hulk in a single direction throughout these films. Now, when it comes to Professor Hulk, I think I dug it. I would have liked him to throw down a little bit in that final climactic battle with Thanos. I wanted a rematch with Thanos, but what they've actually done with the character, I have enjoyed, so he does make it into my top five. Real quick before I give you my top three, after this video, stick around and check out this playlist up above. It has all of my top rankings of the MCU, the films, the heroes, the villains. I'm updating all of those big three because of the release of Endgame. Wednesday, I'm gonna be updating the villains, so be sure to come back for that, and then come back for Saturday, as I'm gonna start a series where I'm gonna rank all 
58 Marvel movies from all universes, X-Men, Punisher movies, Ghost Rider, MCU, all of them in one massive ranking starting this Saturday. I hope you will come and check that out. In third place is Spider-Man. I find him to be such a fun and refreshing addition to the MCU as all of our other heroes are grown-ups in this universe and then he is this teenager thrown in the world of the MCU and so we get a new perspective on this whole world as well as a new perspective on being a superhero in the middle of all these cosmic adventures. I don't think they've had a misstep with the character yet and they managed to give him an amazing death scene and bring him back and it all feels right. As I go into my top two, they represent two very different types of heroes inside of this universe. So over the years, I've gone back and forth as to which character I think is the better, more interesting character. And as Endgame seems to have given us the conclusion to each of their stories, I guess this is my definitive answer as to which one of these two characters I think is the best. Our runner up is Captain America. He's much more the traditional hero inside of this universe. He has his faults, but they're not nearly as overt. Because he's such an old fashioned hero, that can make him boring for some people, but that's kind of what makes him interesting to me. And part of his charm is that he's brought into this complex world and he has a very black and white simplistic view of morality. Add into that, this guy has been given some fantastic moments over the last few films that he showed up in. Especially as you go into that last hour of Endgame, he's given so many moments where my audience just blew up into applause. It was crazy. And he earned every single one of those moments. And they also managed to close out his storyline so well with that final little scene. I'm not quite sure how the time travel elements work on that one, but as a nice closing for his story, I loved it. But in first place, I've got to give it to Iron Man as I think he's given the fullest character arc throughout all of these films, where he starts off as someone that is not looking to be a hero. He is a very selfish man that is all about his own career. And then throughout the films, they've demonstrated that even as he's become the hero, he's still a very flawed person. He's hot-headed. He makes emotional decisions very frequently inside of these films, but still they keep adding layers and developing his character. And you even see the continuation of this in Endgame as he has the angry outburst in the first 15 minutes of the movie, and then after the time jump, he's a much more peaceful version of this character than we've ever seen before that is much more gracious towards other people. And what he represented in that film, which was so powerful for me, is that he actually gained everything because of Thanos' snap. The best five years of his life happened because of what Thanos did, and he had to choose to sacrifice all of that for everyone else to be saved. All of this leading up to one of the most powerful moments in the entire MCU as he puts on that Iron Infinity gauntlet and snaps and says, I am Iron Man. This is a character that has the personality, the likability, the flaws, the character arc, the amazing moments. He has been given it all. I think that he really is the best character in the entire MCU. Remember to check out that playlist right over there with all of my top MCU rankings, the films, the heroes, the villains, all of that fun stuff. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.